new niggas out, I'm that new nigga. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine niggas want to war, ten niggas on the floor, eleven niggas on the porch, twelve killers want to war, thirteen. Cool. What's up, guys? Welcome to another video. Today we are going to go over how I create my hyperlapse loops that I've been posting on Instagram. I've been posting these for the last year and a half, two years, and I've never done a tutorial showing you guys how I make them start to finish. I've done a tutorial on how to make hyperlapses, which is something you will need to know how to do. I'm gonna show you guys how to do it again here, but it'll be really quick and I'm not gonna go into every single detail. And you'll also need to know how to implement motion keyframing. And if you do not know what that is, it really just is a, a really great tool to create seamless transitions. I have a full tutorial on that called Advanced Motion Keyframing. So if you haven't seen that either, check it out. We're also gonna go over a little bit of that in this tutorial. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is take your raw photos that you shot for the hyperlapse. You can skip this step if your photos aren't raw. If they're just JPEG, you can go straight to the next step where we import the photos into Premiere. But I shoot my photos in raw because it just makes the hyperlapses look so, so sharp and it just gives the hyperlapse a really like cool feel. So you want to go into Photoshop, go to File, Scripts, image processor and then select the folder where your hyperlapse photos are and once you have your folder selected with all your raw photos and as you can see all my raw photos are here in this dragon folder make sure to check open first image to apply settings and then save in same location so that it will create a jpeg folder with all the edited photos and then save as jpeg and make sure quality is 12 because that's the highest quality you can do and then press run it'll open up the first raw photo so you can edit it in camera raw and then make whatever adjustments you want to the photo i'm going to turn down the highlights so we can see the sky more maybe up the contrast a bit increase clarity i'm going to drop the highlights even more drop the shadows maybe take away a little vibrance maybe and i'm Typically, I sharpen the image a good bit because I just like really sharp hyperlapses. Then all you have to do is press open and it'll run the script and create all of the JPEGs for that hyperlapse sequence. So this will take a second. Uh, let's fast forward a bit and go to the next step where we bring these into Premiere to create our hyperlapses. So once you're in Premiere, go back to the folder where you had all the raw photos and there should be a new JPEG folder with all the JPEGs of the photos for your hyperlapse. Select them all, drag them into Premiere. I have them all in this little tutorial bin. And if you don't know what a bin is, it's just a folder in Premiere. So then I select all of those photos drag them into a timeline, and then press Control A to select them all, right click, go to speed duration, switch this to one second, and then click ripple edit shifting trailing clips, and that will automatically get rid of the space in between all of the clips and then set them all together so you have your hyperlapse without stabilization. So there's your hyperlapse, but it's not stabilized. So just select all your photos, right click, nest and then I'm just gonna name this hyperlapse and then all you have to do is go up to your effects panel type in warp stabilizer and add a warp stabilizer effect to that sequence and once this is done analyzing you will have your hyperlapse just repeat this for however many times and however many hyperlapses you have and you will get your building blocks for your hyperlapse sequence and we are done. So if you go back and watch through your hyperlapse, you can see how the stabilization did. Let's turn this down a bit so hopefully it plays smoother. And that looks pretty sick. And then what I normally do is I export this. So file, export media, and I export it to a ProRes file so that there's virtually no loss in quality. So I go to QuickTime, Apple ProRes 422HQ, render at maximum depth, 16 bits per color. I actually don't know what that is. Uh, use maximum render quality, and then I export it into a separate file so that we can piece this together in After Effects. So once we're in After Effects, you take your hyperlapse, 
And here is the hyperlapse we just created. I've already gone ahead and created nine other hyperlapses. So all you have to do is piece them together in a way that keeps the motion as consistent as possible, but the motion doesn't need to match up like in the same direction for every clip because we are going to do some seamless transitions here. But if you can match the motion somewhat or find parts of your hyperlapses where the motion matches, you can make some really cool transitions. I noticed that there were a bunch of buses when I was filming these hyperlapses, so I took advantage of that and made a smoother transition here. So let's cut this at a point where there is a bus blocking our view or like within view. Right there, that looks good. So we got a big ass bus in the frame. In this clip, notice there's a big ass bus in one of the first frames. So I'm gonna cut the clip there using Alt bracket alt left bracket and then that just adds a little continuity between the clips to add a bit of a smooth transition so it's like the bus kind of like passes by and then we're all the way in another clip so now we've got the big ass bus passing by on both these clips and then on this last clip with the dragons i actually want to do it in reverse so that we have this whooshy flipping motion at the beginning so right click, enable time remapping, and then flip flop the time remapping keyframes to play it in reverse. And then it kind of just makes it a little more whooshy. I still need to scale out on this one. There we go. And then what I did was I noticed that there's this light coming across the frame. So let's end it there. And then it kind of transitions into this structure here with the dragons and it makes it just a little bit smoother. So pay attention to those little details. And that's how I got that smooth transition there. But we can do a little more with this. We can add a little motion keyframing to just smooth this out even, even more. I'm gonna do a zoom in here. So let's scale in on this clip so that it kind of matches the size a little better in the next clip of this building. And then click the first keyframe here, go to graph editor. I'm gonna zoom in a bit here so we have space to work. And then I'm going to do an easy ease out on that keyframe and then select the last keyframe, do an easy ease in, and then ramp it up so that it gradually zooms in and zips into that next clip. And then we are going to do a zoom in on this second clip as well. I'm going to scale in just a bit here let's say to like 120 and then go back into graph editor and we'll do an easy ease in at the end here and easy ease out at the beginning and have it zooming in really fast on this clip too. So that's how you can create a smooth transition there. See how easy that is? And that's how I create those transitions. But let's try that again with some rotation keyframing. So this seems to be rotating counterclockwise so let's add a rotation keyframe on this clip here at zero and then let's make it move counterclockwise let's see how that looks and you can see where that's going to come together here soon we just got to get into graph editor and add a little more whooshiness there so graph editor easy ease out easy ease in on the last one and then we want it to zip up really fast to the final value there so that it starts rotating really fast at the end. And again, we just need a bigger slope here and then easing out of the original rotation at the beginning. And that gives you just a little zip to that transition. I actually think that's a little too much for my own taste. So let's drop this to negative 15 and make it a little less zippy, so less slope. And that looks cool. I want this to start a little sooner too. So let's make sure that this is a straight line here at the beginning and then zip it in at whatever rate you want here. Just make sure it ramps up to that rotation. And in that case, I think we can go a little more because it's not as zippy when we spread it out. So let's see how that looks. That looks good. Okay, but notice we added these black edges. So we've done this many times on this channel. Just add a motion tile effect to that layer and then make this 
output width and output height, however big you need to cover up that space. And then select mirror edges and you, it should be pretty seamless there. People aren't gonna notice this really, or especially in the sky. Mirroring the sky typically does a very good job at hiding imperfections in the transitions. And that's exactly how I made that edit. I just pieced together more clips and I added more seamless transitions. Then if you export that sequence, you create an After Effects, bring it back into Premiere. Last two things I do to bring this all together is add a LUT over top everything so that the colors are more consistent. Gives it a little pop. And then I added sound design. And we're not gonna go all in on the sound design. It's good to get some ambient sound in there. It's good to get your whooshes in for the transitions. If you guys would like to see a full sound design tutorial on how I do my sound design, please comment that down below, let me know. I've been planning on doing a sound design tutorial of some sort, but I wanna gauge interest on that because sound really does help bring these edits to life. For example, let's see. It just gives it a lot more pop than it would have had without sound because it would have been like this. It looks cool, but the sound makes it pop. And one last tip I have for you guys is at the end, if you want to create a loop for Instagram, which is something I do all the time, just create a seamless transition at the end the same way we just did. So here I have a sliding transition. I just animated the position keyframes and used motion tile. All you have to do is add that transition at the end of your footage and then add it at the beginning of your footage and then everything will loop together and it looks really cool for like an Instagram post. So see, I just did a sliding transition by using motion keyframing with my X position. So it ends up looping like this. Back to the beginning of the footage. And that's again, just motion keyframing, adding a transition at the end and finishing it at the beginning of your sequence. Once you put all that together, you get something like this. And it loops seamlessly and people love that shit, so. Try to get that in there. Anyhow, that is it for this video. That's how I create my hyperlapse sequences. You just create your hyperlapses, bring them together in a way that makes them as seamless as possible without transitions, add your seamless transitions, and everything just looks very smooth and buttery by the end. And again, don't forget your sound design. It really, really ties everything together. If you guys wanna see a tutorial on that, let me know. And that's it for the video, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. If you haven't seen my 2021 recap video yet, go check that out. It's called My Year 2020. One rebirthing. I found out I was bipolar last year, and in case you couldn't tell, I wasn't really posting that much. And it kind of explains all that, and it's a cool edit. It shows a lot of my work from 2021, even though I felt like I didn't do as much last year, I realized that I did do a lot, just not on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. I don't wear Prada, just bring me a white tee I bust all my jealous, I still wear the Nikes I roll with some hitters, I know you don't like me I shit on you niggas, now bring me some white bees You think I'm a killer, well maybe I might be I ain't got no feelings, I dare you to fight me I sleep with a leopard, I'm